Still can't believe season five is only two weeks away. <laughs> yeah, I know. Less than yeah. two weeks away. Yeah. <laughs> so close. So and close. BabsCon like... is going to be there too. Which yeah, is also that's gonna be big. That's going to be huge. After all this waiting, we're almost there. Almost a year. Almost there. Almost a year. How many days? 329. 329 days. Insane. Hello, listeners, and welcome to Pony 411. This is episode 96 for the week of March 22nd. I am Nemesis, and joining me is Alcatraz. Yo. Yeah, as you heard it from the top of the show, we are that close to season five. It is really close. It's kind of getting electrifying the fandom. You can feel it now. Yeah, we, we, the, the hype's starting to build. The hype. The I mean, hype we're already getting hyped, and now it's, it's, it's that point. All it. aboard the hype train. Choo-choo! All right, we do, we have a premiere for you, but it's not that premiere, unfortunately. I mean, if we did, though, most of you would not listen because you won't want to be spoiled, yeah. unless except for the select few of you who are crazy. But we do have a premiere, just not this one. But we also have quite a bit of news. Most of it, well, not most of it. I say a good chunk of it's con news. Good chunk of it, yeah. A good chunk of it's from one particular con in one, California. One very particular. You one. probably know some of this already, if not all of it. But if you want to follow along. Go to pony411.libsyn.com slash show notes. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N. All the links and stuff are there. So let's get started. In convention news, PonyCon AU needs financial help. Right now, they owe some money. It's about $8,000 from what I heard. And if they can't pay it all, there will not be a 2016 con. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, it's really not good because that is the only surviving Australian convention right now. We're ponies. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, because Sydney failed Sydney before it even into started. The... The, the salvage con. Yeah. Yeesh. So this is the one convention down there, and if this failed, that's it. Anyone in Australia wants to go to a convention is going to have to go somewhere else. Entirely different continent, in fact. Yeah, it's a problem. Very much a problem. So hopefully they can pull through on that. They're asking for donations. You don't have to, of course, give it to them, but still. Mm-hmm. That's a thing that is happening. If you want to help, help. Yes. And, all right, lots of Babcon, BabsCon stuff this week. First off, Stable Tech Studios is going to show off their prog- progress on the Fallout Equestria animation and have released a promo for it. And, uh, surprisingly, it's very apocalyptic wasteland of San Francisco. Sounds like Fallout. In San Francisco. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> I have no idea. The Old Grey Mare Show will have a panel at BabsCon. They'll be auctioning off a Lauren Faust art commission and a solid metal print of Leakfish's peace print signed by her and Andrea Libman. So, yeah, if you want your OC drawn by Lauren Faust or whatever... Yeah, don't waste that. Yeah. And you guess this is probably going to go for a lot of money. Who knows, have, though? Have a, good, have a good OC, please. <laughs> please. 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 I'm begging you. Who knows who, how much it will go for? Because well, a lot of people already be there, have spent a lot of money. So who knows? Well, if they, they know it's gonna be there, it, it, yeah. it's gonna go for a lot. It's yeah, it is. It's gonna go. And for so a is lot. the other one. Probably not as much, but still. Uh, that's yeah, because that's a me- metal print that is not a metal coating or anything. That is solid metal. So that is gonna be heavy, and it's gonna be nice. Mm-hmm. And also, the print it's based on is out of print. So that's a really good deal for, on either one of those. So if you have a lot of money to burn, go check, and you're going to BabsCon, go check that panel out. BabsCon has two more main character memberships available at 2500 as a pop. That's that time of recording. They might be sold out. Who knows? By the time we get to airing. Yeah. These are, yes, they're expensive, but you get a lot of stuff for it. You get a whole bunch of stuff. So if you have deep pockets and you're interested, there you go. They also have a post of the con schedule. You know, if you're trying to plan out your weekend. And you know what that includes? Something very important. Yes, their season five premiere party. Yes, thanks to Ponyville Live and Hasbro and Discovery family being gracious. Yeah. They'll be showing the premiere commercial free. And that's not all. Yeah. And if you're in the area, it's the San Francisco area, 
You don't even have to have a con membership to go. Yeah. It's completely free. Yep. If you're just out and about, you're not there for the convention, but you're in the area, you can just come in off the street. Mm Mm-hmm. They're letting That's people saying They're going to have it. a room full of people, which may or not be your thing. I can understand why you may not want to do that. I understand that. Especially, you know, it's going to be full of bronies. Mm-hmm. And probably going to be kind of rambunctious. A little bit. Just a little bit. It's a little. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to be part of the probably the biggest premiere party in the world for MLP, there's your chance. Yeah. It can be loud and rambunctious and crazy. And they're lucky that they're a Convention is on the same weekend as the season five premiere. That must have been. Op- they must have been like, yes. <laughs> yeah, that was that was lucky timing on their part. Anyway, in fandom news, Balloon Party Four is happening. If you are a musician and you're interested, go check it out. They have a listing of all the requirements and what they're going for in this particular album. Yeah, so, remember the Balloon Party albums are themed, mm-hmm. so each. Each one you have to conform to what they're going for with that album. So. Yes, so if you like what you read, submit, see what happens. In merchandise news, more Power Pony themed brushables appeared on Taobao, Saddle Rager, and Maniac specifically. Bit interesting. Joining uh, Masked Matterhorn. Yeah. It'd be interesting having a brushable of Maniac. <laughs> you have to get some gel or something for that one. All that gel. Yeah. Or glue. Or glue. Uh, Horse glue. Horse glue. Please don't. That's just... (laughs) Disturbing? A little bit, yes. (laughs) Speaking of Taobao, though, a Pony Mania Mod Pie brushable has appeared there. And she's flower-themed. Flowers. On mod. On mod. Not rocks. (sighs) Tsk, tsk. It's part of, apparently, the flower-themed brushable set, which was... We saw an advertisement more a while back. Flower power. Not flower power, as far as we know. But, yeah, that's also where we saw the Equestria Girls Chrysalis, which makes you wonder. Makes you wonder. You never know if it's going to be uh, things that make you important go. or not. Hmm. Exactly. And she's also got her robe thing. Robe thing. I'm sure there's a real name for it. We just don't know what it is. It's probably just a robe. Or schmuck. Or a dress. Plain dress. Extreme Watches have released a new line of MLP watches. Right now is the Silver Twilight a gold dash, and a black pinky. They're all available for $28 each. So if you like fancy-ish washes, not super fancy because they're only 30 bucks. Only 30 bucks. Still, they look pretty good, and they're not like just plastered in ponies. It's just the ponies on the watch face. And it's also got, they each got a little metallic outline and whatnot. Yeah. If I was, if I wore watches, I'd probably have to get that gold mm. one. Well, yeah, it's just, I don't wear watches. The Build-A-Bear Luna, Cadence, and Shining plushies are now available to purchase. Yay! The, the release date has come and gone. Yep. So if you want a Build-A-Bear of those, any of those three, they're out. Shining's online only. The other two are available in source and online. And online. So, plushie collectors. <laughs> <laughs> I know that look. Maybe if I get more room. They also have accessories with shiny, apparently shiny eyes, kind of weird little boots. <laughs> weird little black booties. Yes. <laughs> Why does they have feet? They shouldn't have feet. It should just be kind of a, like a cylinder. Instead, it's got a little foot thing. Which, <laughs> I don't know. This just raises further questions. <laughs> Diamond Select's Rainbow Dash Bank is now available for pre-order at Amazon and Enterta- Entertainment Earth for 30 and $20, respectively. Mm, the $10 price discrepancy i don't know why but it's there the entertainment owners might have been able to get some sort of deal who knows on that one it will be available on november 30th that's when i probably will have to get I told you you don't have to get it i don't have to but i'm heavily inclined to <laughs> the dash commands it dash command the waifu commands it yes oh <laughs> Can't ignore the waifu. Images of the Funko Spike figure have popped up in package and the glitter variant. Curiously, Hot Topics put uh, put it up for pre-order and then removed it along with Cadence and Shining Armor. Not sure why they was removed, but it might be because of their sale right now. Possibly. Might possibly, possibly. come back. It might be something weird went on. I don't know. No one really knows. Just something weird happened there. Yeah, stock tends to disappear and appear from their site mm-hmm. or rather often. The spike, though, if it appears again, it will be only ten dollars apparently. Nice and cheap. Yes, cheaper than the others. I believe the ponies tend to go for sixteen to eighteen dollars, depending. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. 
So it's going to be smaller, but it's apparently really scheduled for release on the 31st of March with Shining and Cadence being scheduled for the 24th. So if it's not shown up on the website again by that point or whatever, just keep checking or just go to the local hot topic or call them, whatever. Yeah, I'd say call them. If you if really you... need to spike that bad. Yeah. If I'm not sure why, unless I guess you really, really want to have the complete set or you're a collector who just kind of has these things, keeps buying them even though you don't have room for them anymore. That was rather specific. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't have a spike. Yet. Yet. <laughs> yes, yet. <laughs> there are other things that take priority over spike. So if you want other things to collect, though, multiple books have been announced, including a book called We Like Spike. Speaking of Spike. Yeah, which is apparently a young reader's book. This is the picture books, which are really short and really cheap and really, really simplistic for, like, four or five-year-olds. Yeah. You're probably not going to be interested unless you're a collector, like super collector, or you have a young child. Super collector. I've got cape and everything. Exactly. There's also a Luna book, which will be written by GM Barrow and likely part of the Princess Collection. I would assume so. And a Friendship Games book written by Perdita Finn, who wrote the previous two books, which were Rainbow Rocks and the main event, both of which I've heard are not that great. Yeah. That's a little worrying. Yes, it is a little worrying, because apparently she isn't that great of a writer, or she doesn't care, or whatever. I don't know. Or, who knows, it's a movie tie-in, which usually aren't great books. Usually aren't, no. Alas. Alas. Yeah, cause remember Such she was, is life. She was the one responsible for the line, Dream Eat Flash Century. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> why that line exists, <laughs> but it's it the greatest line. It's a horrible line. You know it. <laughs> it's horrible in itself, but it's great because it makes you mad. I ain't even mad. <laughs> I'm just disappointed. Uh, either way. Yeah. And speaking of reading stuff and comic news, cover B of issue number 29 has been found. And it is basically a messing wing on one side with a main six in the audience on the other. It's a neat little cover if you want to see. I guess it's, I'm hearing it might be the retailer incentive. I'm not sure, but it's cover B. Cover B. Which is coming soon. The Fiendship is Magic trade paperback cover has been revealed, so if you're waiting for the whole collection before buying, and it comes out in June, it's actually a really nice cover. It's got all the villains from the miniseries on it, kind of walking towards the camera. It's kind of neat looking. iTunes has previews for multiple comics up, including Fiendship is Magic number 1, Friendship is Magic number 29, and Friends Forever number 15, because those are all coming out very soon because of that whole dock worker thing. Yeah. Schedules yeah. were messed up. So those are all kind of kind of crashing in all at once, so next few weeks might be a little crazy for us when it comes to reviewing comics. Oh, we'll pull through. <laughs> we'll do it. We'll do we it. can do it. We can do it. Friends Forever number 17 has been revealed, and it's Twilight and Big Mac. Huh. Synopsis reads, Twilight Sparkle's feeling overworked and stressed out. She decides to visit the most zen pony she knows, Big Mac. But Mac is feeling less than communicative, so Twilight will have to go no where no pony has gone before, inside Big Mac's mind. What if there's a reason no one's gone there before? Well, most people, most ponies probably can't go in other ponies' minds. You know, that does raise some interesting questions. Magic. How does she... Uh, it's yes, always magic. If you don't know, it's magic. Some worrying magic. Eh, Twilight's a princess. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Magic's her specialty. We'll see how that goes out. Turns out Big Mac's actually crazy. Completely insane, but no one knows. Yeah. <sighs> Imagine it's just all smarty pants. This explains everything. <laughs> <laughs> Issue 31 of the main series has also been revealed, and its synopsis says, Ponyville Days Part 2. The town struggles to mend a major divide, which, while hordes of tourists descend on Ponyville and threaten to overwhelm the populace. Yay, tourism. Boo. <laughs> Creates a lot of money and stress. And stress. Can't forget the stress. Yeah. And traffic. Yes. <sighs> Lots of traffic. Lots of traffic. Let's just hope these this these uh, issues thirty and thirty one are good. And twenty nine. Because the main series has been on a good streak lately, that's how we say. Yeah. Anyway, show news. In case you haven't noticed, the end date for Friendship is Magic on Netflix has disappeared entirely. Apparently, a deal has been worked out, and it's staying, along with other Hasbro shows like Gem and the Holograms and whatnot, for the foreseeable future. 
Sweet. Yeah, we noticed, or yeah, I noticed uh, over the week that, hey, the, ex- the cutoff date is now the 19th. Huh. That's a two-day extension. I better tell people. And then I was like, why is it only two days? They probably worked out a deal, and turns out they have. Yay. So, Pony's standing on Netflix. There's no date, so it's going to be a while before it's removed. If Who knows? Yeah, if they can... always, I think, I, yeah, I don't know if they actually can put, you know, infinite expiration dates on the. No. On well, the, I think they have to put a real date. Well, they don't have to. They could negotiate a contract that's basically until the service is dead. That's they possible. could. But I don't know how it all works. Probably like they, they negotiate for years or two, we only near two years or something like that. When you're sure whatever happened, it's that they've worked out a deal. Yeah. So ponies and the US Netflix. Yeah. I'm not sure about other versions. Might be on Canadian. I don't know. I don't know. Tell us if you know. The Pinkie Pie Pony Day promo has appeared and it includes a few contextless scenes from season five. So don't watch it if you want to avoid the spoilers. It's nothing big. In fact, it doesn't really spoil doesn't, much of anything, yeah, but still really if you really anything. want to go in dark, just don't. Well. Yeah. So, there's only three left. Only three left. Rarity, Dash, Twilight. I'm pretty sure Twilight's going to be the, the last one. It would fit. It would fit. It would it's usually sense. either first or last with these things. Usually, yeah. Never, Almost never in the middle. And in the final bit of news, episode five of season five has now has a title and synopsis from Zat to it. So, spoilers. Spoiler alert. If you don't want to hear it, click shoot. stop or tune out or whatnot. Tune out, stop, pause, mute. Yeah, Whatever it won't be do. too long. Yeah, it's only been like two or three minutes at most. Yeah. Anyway, it's called Tanks for the Memories, and the synopsis reads, when Rainbow Dash realizes Tank must hibernate for winter, she decides the best solution is to keep winter from coming. I see nothing wrong with this. Nothing wrong with this at all. Except for everything. <laughs> <laughs> she must not be a Game of Thrones fan. <laughs> Winter's <laughs> not coming this year. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, it, it's strange that a weather pony would decide this is a good course of action. She must not yeah, pay, it, paying attention in class. She must have been sleeping again. Maybe, or she just, you know, really wants to spend more time with Tank. Yeah. There's also the other question of timeline issues. Pretty sure we've had a winter between when she got Tank and now. Or Thorming Eve. Yeah. Unless those episodes were aired out, or it was just, well, then. Are you saying that between when she got Tank. And now that less than a year has passed. Yeah, that's a that's, lot of stuff to stuff into a strange. year. Especially since I remember this: Equestria Girls took place three months after season three's finale. But Equestria Girls, tech quote unquote, isn't part of the canon. Oh, it is. Anyone who's saying it's not is full of crap. That's <laughs> or or full of wishful thinking. Wishful thinking, which is more or less the same thing, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Basically. I'm it sorry could, if you it, feel insulted, but this is the truth. It could just be that, you know, he's hibernated before and she just doesn't want him to have to hibernate this year. So. Took, her, took him to Flourish Height. Why is Tank all sleepy? <laughs> and Flourish Height, oh, don't worry, I'll take care of it. Several months later. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Flourish Height. <laughs> it's going to be more than a couple months. Months. An entire season. That's three months. <laughs> Whatever. Winter's three months. That's a couple months, so. Uh, hibernation, I think, goes a little bit longer than that, though. I don't Maybe know. closer to four. I don't Actually, I think it changes based off of species. Yeah. Maybe just turtles have a real... Or tortoises. Tortoise. <laughs> tortoises <laughs> have a really short <laughs> hibernation. Maybe. I didn't I even know. know tortoises would hibernate. Do they? I don't even know if they do. We'll find out. <laughs> Whatever. This is also the episode, I'm thinking this might also ah. be the episode, where Rainbow Dash has her solo that we've been told about. So. Lena Hall's tank. This <laughs> <laughs> should be so freaking weird. It would be. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> it, somehow it all makes sense in the end. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember that, that that little clip that we got of that. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. I'm trying to figure out how that would fit in with Tag, and it's just like, wait, what? <laughs> no tears, only seeing now. But we shall that see. is the news. 
Anyway, as I said at the top of the show, we have a premiere. Not season five premiere. Hold your horses. Hold your horses. Yes. <laughs> I get it. Horse jokes everywhere. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. We have this. This is the season two premiere. If you remember, that is Return of Harmony, aka the Discord episodes. Mm, yes. As a quick recap, Chaos is in Ponyville. Oh no. Pony save it, but then they get a message from Celestia. Turns out Discord is back, and he's causing chaos because he is the Discord. Lord of Chaos, the Lord of Chaos, Spirit of Chaos and Disharmony, whatever you want to call him. Q, Q, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he's voiced by John Delancey. Anyway, so he turns out, and he turns out he's also stolen the elements to well prevent him from going trapped in stone again. So he hides them, and they have to go find them, and they go into a maze, and they all get a. Uh, Go become their an- the antithesis of their elements, fancy unfortunately. Fancy words. Yes, fancy words, because I'm speaking fancy. I'm speaking fancy. So they you know, they have to go hunt them now, and they fail initially, and they're all become grayed out and mean and all that stuff until Twilight gets a bunch of letters from Celestia through Spike, who's in extreme pain. And she goes and gets her friends back and gets them all together, and they zap Discord and save the day, and Sequestria is back to normal. They get... Uh, Congratulated and all that stuff. The end. The end. Quick recap. Yep. Don't you wish all of them were that quick? I wish. <laughs> Instead of me rambling for five minutes. Uh... <laughs> we're good at rambling. Very good. That's why we can go for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> and an but... entire hiatus. Yes. For an entire hiatus. Holy crap. <laughs> Just to give you an idea, we'll be at episode 98 when season five airs. When we ended, we were in the 50s. Where when season four ended, we were in the fifties. That's a lot of episodes. That's a lot of episodes. <laughs> but getting almost, back to yeah. this episode of Ponies, <laughs> yeah, this was actually a really nice way to come back to season two after that that first hiatus we ever experienced. Come back to season two? Yes, exactly. I hadn't even started. You <laughs> you came in right before season two aired. You were lucky. You didn't experience pain yet. Now you know true pain. Whereas I was already okay, I was no one's experienced this level of pain. We well, all had all experienced this pain. one. To begin. We all know true pain. We didn't know. None of us knew true pain before now. But and I was one. Of, I joined before season one was over, so I experienced a full hiatus. And yeah, this was actually a pretty good way to come back. Although, as we and they kind of said so before it aired, but. After we saw it, it was pretty obvious this was not supposed to be the premiere. This was supposed to be the season one finale, and it shows. It does. It shows really hard, because <laughs> lots of recaps from over the season, including at the end with the letters and Twilight bringing her friends back. We got... Yeah, it actually showed flashbacks from earlier scenes. Yes, lots of those, including on the if I notice Applejack, tend to be in groups. Because it's like, not a lot of Applejack, do you wonder? Oh, huh. Except for Applejack being a silly pony in Applebuck season. And it also ends with a big uh, A New Hope parody. You yeah. Know, remember the Celebration Throne Room scene thing at the end, end of A New Hope. It's basically a parody of that. It, Pretty it's well a, it's to a, a T. Yeah, it's a very, very straight up parody. Big, bombastic horn music coming down a walkway. Lots of They even have there. the same expression. The winks. And, and, yeah. Yeah. All they need is a little thing hobbling along, beeping. <laughs> Should have made Spike do that. Why is he beeping? I don't know. I think the whole letter <laughs> thing messed with him. Well, they could have done something. It may not have been beeps, but something else. Maybe groans or something. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, as I said, also John Delancey played Discord, who was, before this, very well known for Q. Still is mostly well Still known for is. Q. But he's now in this fandom and a little bit outside of it. I guess and that borders this fandom. Known for Discord as well. Yeah, it was And a... also known for making a documentary which may or may not have been uh well received <laughs> uh, yeah it just was one of those things they modeled discord yeah, after the, Q. the the story behind that was pretty cool yeah that was the like i think the one cool thing about that whole well oh yeah in the the documentary yeah, it was one yeah. of the few cool things the whole lauren was pitching it to hasbro like, and tried like to Q. explain it and they went oh can we get can we get delancey and then they did. Well, can we? <laughs> it's one of those. So th- well, can we? <laughs> and they I don't did. know. I'm the one with the money. <laughs> you are. <laughs> <laughs> then he turned out to love this fandom and 
Yeah. Made that a documentary. And made a documentary about it, but... His heart was in the right place. Yeah. It was most... Yeah. I'm trying not to sit here bad mouth that documentary again. But anyway, we're going moving back to the actual show. Yeah, this was, you know, like I said, it was supposed to be the season one finale. But, you know, as we saw, season, both season one and two are the same length of 26 episodes. So at one point, season one was 28 and season two was 24. Besides, I guess they decided to even them out and cut this off. And it's very, you know, like we said, it was obvious. even had the original season one theme. Or yeah. The theme yeah, the it, opener. Yeah, base, yeah. So. And theme because they slightly tweaked it for season two and four, three and four. Well, four also had different animation with, attached to it as well. Yeah, I think they've tweaked it slightly yeah. every season. Well, no, season three was exactly the same as season two. So I remember oh, that. Okay. Season four, they add a new animation. Season five, who knows? They might have to change it again because, well, the treehouse is kind of a, a crater. Yeah. <laughs> this is also it was obvious because it was had a different theme. Because like, I remember they talked about, oh, we're gonna have a new theme for season two, and then we got the same theme. We're like, what gives? What and they're gives? like, oh, that's because it was a season one episode. Oh, really? Well, it's kind of obvious. But yeah. It, it does make had, sense. It even it, had its own special th- music in the credits. Yeah, special special credit music. The entire episode just felt like a now, recap. now you... Or an end cap, I should say. In, in the, yeah, some little bits of recap, but it was an end cap because it was, you know, Twilight using everything that she's learned th- through the past seasons. Yes, Twilight. Because so, yes. remember, in season one... Twilight was the main character specifically. This is this is always one of those things that makes me, makes me laugh when people say, "Oh, it's becoming the Twilight Sparkle show." Did you I watch th- season one? Because <laughs> there were several episodes where Twilight was just kind of and that's that's I'm, I'm a Twilight Sparkle fan. Let's be honest, she was unnecessarily thrown into a couple of those episodes just because she had to be there. Yeah, <laughs> I'll say that I, she was unnecessary, but I don't mind her being there. But she was unnecessary in those some of those episodes. But it, was the finest part. but it was kind of yeah it was a fitting end cap so yeah it was a little bit strange to have it as a premiere but yeah. hey, it worked yeah it worked it still worked it still works as a premiere though i think it still would have worked better as a finale than a premiere i think lesson zero would have been a great f- premiere in itself because that was the episode that introduced a major change for the show which was they're all going to be writing letters now and hey look then we got season two went on it was several episodes of probably just to even show up at all or was cursory. But this one had John Delancey. Yeah, John Delancey. But... Instant season two hype. <laughs> they could have just shown that one of the pictures of Twilight's face and that's instant season two and lessons your own instant season two hype. Like, what is going on here? <laughs> the Cheshire cat face? Exactly that. Yeah. Or there's, well, there's a multitude of faces you could choose from. <laughs> uh, yeah. She makes a lot of great ones. A lot of crazy ones. But, Speaking back to the actual premiere, I just, yeah, it's kind of, it's two, you know, it's again, two, uh, two episodes, like, every premiere so far, and this one coming up, too. Two episodes, so get a little bit longer. Discord was great. John Delancey did a fantastic he job. did an amazing job. So at this point, we had gotten to know the characters pretty well, so we got to see them all being them. We got Rarity saying, oh, will help as long as... As long as... I don't get dirty or have to get out from this umbrella. I'll help as long as I don't actually have to do much of anything. Yes. I'll help as long as it's not actually hard. <laughs> <sighs> Rarity. Yeah, as, as it was also interesting just seeing, the, you know, when Discord, I guess, discorded them, about people referred to it. He, they turned gray, or they came muted for colors at first, then they turned gray as they come became worse. You know, seeing Fluttershy become a jerk and Pinkie Pie telling everyone to stop laughing and Applejack lying. That was that funny. Stuff. Yes, Applejack lying at first very bad at it still, but then making silly faces. <laughs> that is a great face. Yes, it's a funny face and it works really well. And as time goes on, though, you see she stops making it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because she just, the lies just come out smoother. Yeah, and just, uh, Fluttershy just acting. Not oh, wow. Oh, like Fluttershy. Your face! That was probably one of the greatest scenes there, too. <laughs> uh, he's trampling on flowers for no reason, just to be a jerk. Just to be a jerk. Because he has to be the opposite. Yeah, and also, it's just, I've also found it interesting because uh, we already have the stained, the stained glass stuff, which was, you know, showing, oh, look, these are big things that happen now, then that becomes a thing later on in the series as well. This is our first real, hey, look, the stained glass stuff, which, because they we got, I believe there was, I can't remember if there was one, no, there was, was it one for the Candlelight Wedding stuff? 
I think I think there was there was yes. there was, but it was um, just Cadence and Shane yeah. But I'm just but I'm just talking about major events. Yeah, and we got one for the Crystal Empire and Twilight becoming a princess, and yep. probably is going to be one pretty for T Rex being defeated. <laughs> yeah, pretty much every premiere has a yes. new window and finale. Some and finale, some but any the big one, the big yeah. events. Obviously, the best night they got Grand Galva go got it rewarded. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> The hedge maze seemed just kind of just the whole thing. That was pretty much the entire first episode, just pretty much the hedge maze. Which yeah, it was, was an interesting it was. thing, just watching them. I do find it odd that they didn't really... It took a while for them to kind of catch on, that something's kind of wrong. Yeah, because later with Spike, we noticed that yeah, you know, they, they, the he, muted colors he was were visible. Them. Twilight noticed them. She probably just figured it was Discord doing something. She, the only way to fix it is to get rid of Discord, which is not... a not a, no, not, not too just, far. You can't blame off, her for making that assumption of just. But yeah, maybe. You can't maybe blame her for like well, this will be fixed as long as we get the elements to work, and well, the elements didn't work because they weren't really representative of them anymore. It's weird that they the always, dash was missing. It seems like they didn't make the connection between the colors and the. Acting well, she probably just knew Discord had something to do with it, but I don't know. I don't know. It, also, we were also weird that. that the ponies and them in general kind of fell for these things kind of easily. Yeah. Applejack, like, oh, hey, look, talking apples. <laughs> Not weird at all. Does that mean Applejack talks to apples anyway? <laughs> From what we know of Applejack, I would not be surprised. <laughs> that pony sure remember, does love apples. Yes. Yeah, yeah, remember, she was talking to Bloomberg, the tree. The tree. Yes. And not Fluttershy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Rarity. She, like, recognized the trap, but still sprung it. That was strange. Why? Because Beautiful Diamond, which was well, actually Tom the Rock. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, Tom. Everyone remembers Tom. Everyone remembers Tom Dan the Rock. Just imagine, what if Tom was actually a geode? <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Rarity. Oh, that rock you threw out, turned out it actually was a gem. <laughs> you just had to open it up. <laughs> Like that other one, when you found your just like, Yeah, just like the other one. Although, oh, that wasn't really a Tom kind of came back on Mod's butt. <laughs> it was funny. They repurposed the image. Yep, it's that they was just repurposed the asset. It's Tom. It's Tom. Yeah. This just raises further questions. <laughs> and, and of course, Discord had to cheat on Fluttershy. Yep, had to cheat. Didn't work right. normally. Oh, wait. <laughs> that doesn't, sound, that doesn't right. sound right. But, yeah, just, nope. Try to kind of lead her down the path and it didn't work. So, just, nope. Straight up change. Just, it's kind of scary nope. that he has that kind of power. He could have done it at any point. He just, I guess he just was having more. He wanted, he he wanted just to wanted play. Have fun. Yeah, yeah, that's the whole thing. So, he's just like, oh, this is this is getting boring or annoying. This isn't working. There, you're not, you're a jerk now. <laughs> Now I'm a jerk and everyone loves me. <laughs> everyone should know that quote. It's, yeah, it's also Dash just kind of like, here's your wings. In a box. Open the box. They don't actually really show that part. Yeah, but... Yeah, it's a whole... They're all hypnotized. Yeah, it, it, it's it's a strange thing how easily kind of... It's kind of weird it, it in is, a sense. It, yeah, it is kind of weird. The whole the whole thing is. It's also kind of weird how for Twilight to get her Discord, you have to break the others first. Well, because her thing is, yeah. it's it's magic, but it's friendship because friendship it's also, is yeah, magic. It's also that weird so thing of, you don't. Um, you have to Discord make said her... it was the the most powerful and elusive. Yeah. So you have to break her friendships in order to from the remember from the beginning. They pretty much established that magic is the kind of the the important one. And then well, we got big crown into... thingy. Yeah, exactly. Big crown thingy. And then there's another lot of good lines in this this episode as well. There's some great lines. That oh, we I keep am weak and helpless. <laughs> <laughs> Look out! Here comes Tom. Here comes Tom. You're the new. Ra- Congratulations! You're the new Rainbow Dash. <sighs> that whole scene. <laughs> yeah, you know, this Dash was missing for most of part two. Well, she was in I quote know. unquote clouds day. Yeah, the cloud, just a little cloud. Hey guys. That's oh, very Cloudsdale. Everything is awesome. 
<laughs> I thought we said never to speak. I thought we told you not to speak of this guy. Yeah, that was. It's, 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 that's why part of the reason I think it would have been a great end cap to season one. It's just it, it was. It was meant to be. It was written to be an end cap, and it would have yeah. worked really well. It was well. also Emmy Larson. He took away wings. <laughs> I'm gonna say, wait. <laughs> what is, I do find it funny that uh, uh, the whole oh, take away the wings and horn, and then they freak out, which makes sense. It's part of who they are, especially with like Dash and Twilight, well, especially in particular. those yeah. two in particular. It's, that would be a huge deal for both of them. Mm-hmm. Their life pretty much revolves around. Although those. there's a lot of people are like, what about Pinky and Applejack? How would they feel about these them freaking out? And it's like I don't think they'd actually be offended because, well, it is part of them. Yeah. Like I said, Dash is her whole life is pretty much flying and something she can't. And Twilight is her life magic. is magic. Without oh. losing that, Twilight loses magic. What does she have? Actually, there's a series organized series about that yeah, right I know, now. But I'm not really. It's, it's a little interesting. It's a little weird, but well, she's an organization. Well, a librarian. A librarian, see, it's fine. Well, not fine. But she'd probably become a bitter, depressed shell, just like Dash would too. Mm-hmm. If that was permanent, but it turned out fine in the end. It turned out fine. They got all their stuff back. I do also. I remember the beginning is just an initial bit with the the statue garden. And that was cool. And <laughs> the, 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 the CMC, CMC are the reason for everything. They the CMC brought about the apocalypse or the second apocalypse. <laughs> yeah. And nice job. The third po- apocalypse, I guess, was Chira because uh, the changes were pretty localized, and so was Sombra. Yeah. T Rex though oh I guess there was the vines. That was kind of a I don't know. That was semi localized. Uh, no, well, it got hit, all the way to Canalot, remember, so it's them, kind so. of ap- apocalyptic. Sort of yeah. It was semi apocalyptic. It's a baby apocalypse. <laughs> baby apocalypse. Oh, that's cute. It's got the word baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's what this is let's see, this is a second out of four apocalypses that Equestria has faced. <laughs> Equestria is kind of a weird place to... People think, like, Equestria is a peaceful place to live. Yeah, Have about that. you watched that. the show? <laughs> about that. <laughs> but, yeah, it's just... Also, it's funny. Well, not funny, but I was thinking about this because I just watched season one. And it was like, it's interesting because, well, the CMC caused Discord to be able to break free because their chaotic nature of... Well, they demonstrated chaos so well, or Discord so well. But I'm just wondering if it's already kind of weakened because of the gala. Because yeah. that was pretty chaotic. That was pretty chaotic, and some of it happened right there in the garden. The question is, where in the garden? Yeah. Well, I wonder. It may have taken I also, place off and this, I remember this was a line that a lot of people latched onto, is a, I don't turn ponies into stone. Oh, yeah. That was that line. line. That was like, ooh. Remember the Tyrant Lestia stuff that went around for a long time? Yeah. Still going around? Yeah, a lot of people went, latched on and went, is there something there? Or is this Discord kind of being uh, I don't turn upset. ponies into stone. Is there a, yeah, it's because like, like of course, how many people of those, like the other statues? Other statues like, are those? There's not even a comic about it where Twilight's. Just, I wonder. You she know, starts to try to undo the statue, and this pony, then this pony's <laughs> losing their minds. It's like, okay, nope, 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 nope. Yeah, actually, funny you should mention that one of the a while back we did that one episode where we featured a whole bunch of music. One of the ones I picked was a song about that. Yeah, where was there was one of them that was imprisoned. Exactly. Because he stood it's up still, to Celestia. Still, it's like, even if they, she did turn him into stone, which I don't think is actually a thing that happened, I don't think she'd do it without a very, very, very good reason. Yeah, it took, you know, discord, terrorizing I don't the think entire she can't, country. I think it's another one of those things, like, people like to say, oh, Celestia just banished things to the moon, ha ha. Yeah. But it's like, she had to have the elements to do that. Yeah. To Luna, and she did not want to do it. Yeah, that's and then, well, not with Discord. They had to have the elements to do it. It's not something they just do willy nilly. Yeah, they don't have a cannon or anything. <laughs> a moon cannon, exactly. So yeah, it, it was kind of a, it's one of those fun, I guess, what ifs. But kind of like I think people got a little. Uh, I think people took it a little too far. Yeah, but it's yeah, still a fun thought sometimes. Yeah, it's kind of I guess interesting thought experiment for a what if. Uh-huh. Not canon though. Yeah, not canon. Tyrant, Les- Tyrant Lestia is not canon. Moon you got cannon. that? <laughs> Non-canon. Unless Emmy Larson says otherwise. <laughs> Everything is canon if you go have him sign your... Is this cardboard box canon? <laughs> just just go buy his book and he'll say it's canon. Yep. <laughs> if I buy your book, am I canon? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, that... 
Maybe that's how Black Griffin got into the choir. <laughs> oh God, what have you done? What I'm have, sorry. Uh, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> but I said this before, but uh, Discord is kind of a last week actually. Discord is kind of the I think design wise is the weakest villain. Yeah, yeah. It's, as far as feel being you know, evil. Yes, he's got great design, yeah, but I don't but think he's as evil as the other ones we've seen. I still think Chrysalis and uh, Nightmare Moon probably the best designed of the villains so yeah. far. T Rex is kind of yeah, he's, he's, they have to mm, they had to follow the original yeah. design a little bit, so yeah. not much they can do with that. But Chrysalis and Nightmare Moon, though, they're pretty good. Those are pretty good. So uh, also, also, be, also remember the beginning of the CMC was the. Uh, that just the, the oh. insults being thrown at each other. You dodo, don't call me. Things I, I don't, I don't know the meaning of. What are you, a dictionary? <laughs> dodo is probably good insult for a school. Well, school actually, if you notice, they tend to do that a lot. They yeah. call her names of flightless birds. Although the chicken thing was supposed to be about cowardice, not um, not being able to fly. Yes, but it's stuck. You have the dodos, the chickens. And much, a lot of people really don't like that. Yeah, the chicken oh. thing. I thought, you know, you know at first it was Although funny, but it got so overused. Stupid. Yeah. What are you a dictionary? Oh. What are you a dictionary? And Sweetie Belle's a dictionary now. Sweetie Belle's a dictionary now. Yep. <laughs> and once again, we, they mentioned Luna, but didn't actually show her. It's like my sister and I. It's like, speaking of which, <laughs> where is she? <laughs> oh, there she is. Two two episodes later. It would have been an entire hiatus later. So, oh, such <laughs> is life. More fan in. Yay. She's emo. She's just like Twilight. She was getting used to the new culture. <laughs> she sort of. She's plotting her revenge. She was regaining her strength, she's and that's just, why her mane and tail changed when we saw know, I'm her just next. talking about fan and stuff. Like, what's Luna like? Well, it turns out she's uh, socially awkward and loud. She's a gamer. Wait. No, that's that's, that's a, a whole another rabbit hole. That's a whole another rabbit I don't want to go down it. Yeah, this was an actually a pretty good, actually really great premiere. Although I would say it was definitely topped by less than zero. Just to, well, actually, if I recall, this was this premiered in the September of 2011, I believe, and they didn't actually show the next episodes until October. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that was a thing. For some reason, we had a multi-week yeah, break. Yeah, that was like, wait, why? I'm not sure why. It was weird, but whatever. I think it was just a timing thing. I guess. But yeah, it was a great episode, but I think less than zero kind of overshadowed it almost immediately. <laughs> Eh, sort of. I, I I think I would disagree with you. I think they're at least equal. I say Lesson Zero. I remember for a long time I was saying Lesson Zero was the best episode ever made. Yes, but you're also biased. Well, I'm not. I wasn't alone in that. Well, I know. They're not biased either. But um, I'm just before saying. Before that, though, I would have said would, Pink, would put uh, Party of One was great, too. Party of One was really good. In fact, I think Party of One is the best episode of Season 1. But that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, it was still great. Uh, and of course, it led down to eventually Discord coming back in season three and four, and he's now become good. And yep, he's a recurring background character. He's the longest reformation reformation of all the villains. Yeah, so far, so unless far. Chrysalis comes back and becomes good somehow. In this case, well, he might break that record. I think maybe, maybe I'd have to do the math. Yeah. So yeah, it's still a great episode. Yep. Uh, had a long lasting implications for later on. Also, Return of Elements of Harmony. Yes, the Return of Our MacGuffins. Yes. Including the big crown thingy. Big crown thingy! Yes. That's it's important. Line. We didn't know why yet. Super more important than we already knew. We knew it was important, but we didn't know how important just yet. But anyway, yeah, it was a great episode, and not much else to talk about, I think. We we're kind of babbly. Getting but, a bit babbly, and we're also running. But that was because we're a little time. chaotic this week. <laughs> no, that was horrible. No. That was horrible. You're horrible. Yeah, that's that's I guess the, the end of our little discussion. I would have had uh, issue twenty eight, but uh, mix ups happened. Yeah, mix ups happened. Uh, unknown variables happened. <laughs> Some chaos happened. Exactly. <laughs> Some Trying discord in the shipping. Exactly. Not yeah. that shipping. Yeah. Although, that reminds me of the shipping Discord with other characters thing. There was, it was pretty much, from the beginning, it was either with Pinky, Twilight, or Celestia. 
Yeah, no one really. And then later on, it's Fluttershy because of season three. Yeah, I think. Yeah, those those four are still somewhat around. Yeah, Pinky P- Discord one. Pinky one kind of died it, off though. It's especially still since around, season four, we but... find out that Discord is actually kind of annoyed by Pinky a lot, which is strange. Yes, but yeah. Anyway, as I guess, ad- ad- addendum. addendum. But yeah, now we have a uh, some fan content for you. Yes, starting off with music. Yep, I have got another three songs. So to start that off, I have. Dash of Loyalty by Energy Brony. Rainbow Dash's theme, obviously. He's been doing a whole bunch of themed songs for each of the main six. This one's a bunch of really nice electric guitar and some other guitar work. It's it takes some inspiration from Mando Pony's old loyalty song. So you'll you kinda hear that in the background. I just thought it was that was really well done. Uh yeah, it had nice guitar work, I will give it that. It's pretty good. I really enjoyed the car to, to guitar work. The vocal clips from the show though, the kind of felt really random there is actually a version on the youtube page with that for a version without the vocal clips yeah but the vocal so clips felt really random and that. didn't really fit and they kind of felt like they're just kind of thrown in at the last minute almost it, it, it does kind of feel like that i, I mean i mean like the guitar work and the actual song itself are really good it's just that the vocal clips are like feel really out of place they don't feel like they were really added really with a with thought behind them it's just kind of yeah, this seems good. That's why there's a version without the vocal. Yes, yeah. probably would be better. But then that's the whole uh, pony. Is this ponies? Thing? Well, it's based off of a yeah. definite pony song. So, yeah. So the next one I have, this one's got a bit of a weird name. It's one twenty one fifteen by Prince Whatever. Spent your whole life wishing that you could go back to it all again. It's not. Again, more guitars. This one's a little bit different than his normal stuff. It's a bit softer. So this is a nice soft rock. It's got mm-hmm. some pretty good vocals to it, though. So it's nice to see this guy back. He has been sort of out of the scene for a while. I thought that was a good song. Yeah, again, this one also has good guitar work. Very nice guitar work. The lyrics, they're all right. I'm not... I was looking at them. They're not like, particularly great or memorable, but they're serviceable. And also saw something in the description that kind of caught my eye, which is apparently it was not intended to be a pony song. No, no, it was just he uh, gave it to an said uh, gave it to an artist said here I want you to draw something. They just drew Twilight. Hmm. It apparently was not intended to be pony or pony related in the slightest. So, uh, yeah, it's on the YouTube description. All right, the last one I've got. This one is Aurora Borealis by New Riverian. mellow it's a uh, somewhat trancy ish but it's got some good vocal splicing with a bit of touch of web in there too mm-hmm. so yeah and this one has a, had a very interesting instrumentation i liked it overall and 
no, 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 no guitar here. <laughs> no guitar here. No, this one's <laughs> this all electronic. Different. This is electronic. And I like the way this one. I think in contrast to Dash of Loyalty, that the vocal stuff were was integrated way better. It actually fits. Yeah, I think this one. You know, this one was intended to have yeah. the vocal splicing. Was fit around. Yeah, that was more. obvious. That was more obvious. The other yeah. one had them kind of put in the last minute. Yeah. So this one is definitely uh, counter to that one, which is. This one just, this is how you do vocal integration from another song or just words or dialogue or whatever into your song. But the other one was not. And that's that's what I've got for this week. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah. I got fanfic. <gasps> you do? Yes, I do. Uh, this one is uh, Firebird Dahlia by the Albino Corn. And that name might sound familiar to you. It does. Yes, this is the author of Long Road to Friendship. Hmm. Yeah, this one, this is an interesting concept, I thought. I was, like, looking. I was like, okay, I'll keep it, check it out, because, well, it's the Albino Corner. Well, I like their work. So, yeah, basically, it's, well, Sunset comes back to Equestria. After, this is after Rainbow Rocks, by the way. And she comes back, and she wants to kind of reconcile with her family, but she's kind of afraid of it at the same time, because, well, she kind of messed things up a little bit. Even before she left, she was already messing things up. And, Just a little. Well, she finds her sister first. Spitfire. Yes, that one. Yes, that Spitfire. You know, Wonderbolts, Dash's Idol Spitfire. And, well, things don't go well. Apparently, Sunset really messed things up between them way back when. They haven't extrapolated what it is exactly, but definitely things were very bad already before she left Equestria. And she also managed to find her parents, who were kind of separated because things just kind of fell apart. Yeah. I wouldn't say fell apart per se, just kind of things dried up. The the relationship kind of... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it also turns out this is an interesting twist where Sunset's the only unicorn in her family. Everyone else is a Pegasus except for, like, her grandpa or something. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting that kind of, that, that idea that Fick puts forth in this universe, anyways, that part of the reason Sunset turned out the way she did is kind of, kind of a feeling of isolation amongst her family so i found it really interesting and i also already like his writing style in general and i kind of because i know he there is sunlight shipper i kept looking for little things in the <laughs> because dialogue of trash <laughs> yes exactly because even though know, it's not remarked romance it's just like i couldn't help it because i know this it's <laughs> who the author right so i don't know idea but it's still really good i find it the concept itself interesting and i want to see where it goes yeah i i thought it was I thought it was pretty good. I'm definitely going to keep this one on my favorites list and watch watch it as it progresses. Mm-hmm. It's only got, it's got four chapters right now. It's not finished. Yeah. So it's it's definitely interesting. Definitely an interesting concept. That, that's a big thing I can say about it. It's written very well. I can't find anything wrong no. with it. It's just <laughs> not a concept I would have thought of. Yeah. So I would I would recommend it. <laughs> Dash also appears real quickly. So I want to see how, just you know, I wanted to see how Dash would react to a, you know, well, we did find out, but it's just one of those. How does Dash react to going? Wait, you're friends with Spitfire? No, actually, that's just kind of an interesting related to Spitfire. Thing. That's yeah, that's an interesting. Although it, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in just you know seeing how the um, Spitfire. It's, that was an interesting in of itself, and I want to see what caused the rift. Yeah, because it was already it's pretty much implied that there already things were already starting to go south well before t- sunset left it's definitely something to to watch for there's an interesting thing going on but i, I don't really want to spoil it right too badly so it's pretty yeah so definitely check it out it's for a new take on characters <laughs> sort of anyway that's the end of this episode if you enjoyed it you can go check out past and future episodes at pony411.libson.com all episodes are there for download. You can also check us out on iTunes, search for Pony411 and subscribe. You can also find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Pony411 if you don't want to download anything. You know, just streaming format, it's nice for you. Subscribe there if you want, comment, whatever. You can find us on Stitcher, stitcher stitcher.com or on the apps on iOS or Android, search for Pony411 there. It's a nice way to keep in, I guess, uh, keep up. On Tuesdays, you can find us on Ponyville FM. That is at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. It's still the same. We got it at Daylight Savings Time. Just if you're in a different time zone, you got to figure that out. It's They have a schedule. Don't worry. You can find it there if you want to look. You can also find us on Ponyville Live. We are now part of the Ponyville Live Network. 
So if you want to get updated there, you can look. We're every time a new episode comes out, we'll be listed on the front page. We have our own show page and all that stuff. Go check it out, PonyvilleLive.com. Yay. If you want to contact us, you can email us at Pony411Podcast at gmail.com. You know, comments, criticisms, questions. Tell us we mumbled too much about Discord and whatnot. We can take the criticism. We can. We really can. You can also like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash pony411. All the episodes will be listed there when they come out. And you can also like, you know, like I said, like us or comment on the posts or on our wall or whatever it's called now. <laughs> I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, our primary method of communication anymore, Twitter. We're at pony411. We'll sometimes post news if we find it and we don't think it's time sensitive or whatever. We'll talk, wouldn't make silly jokes, whatever. Yeah, or like follow us there. Big news comes out right yes. after we record. Exactly. We'll if it's usually tweets big, and we like that. don't think we can wait a week. Yeah. You can also find us on our personal twitters. I'm at Nemesis Prime One. He's at Alcatraz with an underscore at the end and a seven seven a T. See us there. See me sing, talking about Hotline Miami Two soundtrack. Cause there is really good soundtrack, and you really need to listen to it. Not kidding. Not exaggerating. It is a pretty good soundtrack. So anyway, that's the end of this episode. Uh, tune in next week. We are going to go to another premiere. Uh, which one is it? Who knows? Well, we know. We know. But you're you probably, probably going to get it wrong. You might You might be surprised. But anyway, that's it. Uh, join us next week. Till then, though, please pony responsibly, guys. Bye. <laughs>